can't tell you how important it is to have architecture in support of some kind of social or learning purpose. This is architecture as a servant rather than an end in itself. So the aquarium is really an effort to bring people together in common purpose of protecting the natural world and enjoying intimate engagement with it. And for me, it was an emotional origin. And it came from my own childhood and the sense of wonder that I had as a child playing with minnows in a pond in Cape Cod. It wasn't clear to me that I was going to be designing aquariums. I had just finished graduate school at Harvard and I was actually interested in the content of exhibitions much more than I was in the structure of buildings. But along came a friend who said to me, let's form a multidisciplinary office. And for the next seven years, from 1962 to 1969, we developed the New England Aquarium design and oversaw its construction and learned in the course of things that an aquarium was an extraordinary building type. Those little guys, they look like seaweed or something, but they're living creatures. The aquarium is a dark magic box that would have power, theatrical impact, emotional experience, and that could be immersive or that would surround you and make you feel you were in a world underwater, an aquatic museum. Aquarium was conceived as a box, basically a, a new warehouse, joining the warehouses of downtown Boston, the granite warehouses that have been so much a part of that city's heritage. But on the inside, it had all kinds of complexities, sculpting with architectural forms. The composition is a kind of concrete sculpture and work its way to the outside as a reinforced concrete system of building. The effort we were making was to orchestrate the experience rather like a musician does composing a piece of music. It's linear, you have a beginning, a middle and an end. You have a structure along the way. You have a complex series of engagements along the way. The conceptual starting point of our design, we thought we should create a dark space in which the focus of attention would be on those things which were illuminated. The central tank, we called it the giant ocean tank. And the idea was that it would act as a kind of lantern in the space. Another idea behind this tank, this structure, is that these columns which act as the supporting structure for the tank, also act as the supporting structure for the ramp. They have beams underneath them. So you're standing on a slab spiraling down on beams that spiral down attached to these columns. And that spiral forms a kind of compression ring that holds the water in in the middle. The columns are spaced about five feet apart, so they form little niches where a family of visitors can take possession of this little space, and it becomes their own little private viewing place. That allows the rest of the public to go by them, and the flow of people continues while they can stay as long as they want in their chosen window. It's not about style. It's not about, you know, star architecture at all. It's a quality of place that has to do with its content. There was no separation between architecture and exhibit. The structure itself became the exhibit as a theater, a stage for living things. When we began our aquarium in Boston, we wanted to 
you might say, begin to address ecosystems and behavior and the richer complexities of life and do it in a way that was emotionally driven more than informationally driven. And then encourage people to read and to learn after the experience of the encounter. Well, they've been very central to my career because the first building that I did was an aquarium of any kind before I even did a house or any other building type. And it became a successful prototype of some kind as an urban experience offering people something that they hadn't seen before, which was complexity of life in an urban setting, which they could enjoy in an hour, an hour and a half, and come away with having learned something and having had a good time. Urban renewal is a big part of this for me by the fact that Boston no longer had a freight basis for its economy. By the end of the 19th century, the uh, port was a pretty much dead place. Over here, there was nothing. These buildings didn't exist. None of those buildings existed. It was a barren, abandoned waterfront with rotting piers. It came back to life in the 20th century with urban renewal, and the aquarium has been able to be a building type that can join in a high-density agglomeration, you know, become part of an urban, dense core. The impact on the city is enormous if you have people coming all year round. So it became an economic engine for redevelopment. Well, that makes me happy <laughs> as hell. <laughs> Wonderful to see. The urgency is one of engagement before it's too late, because, for example, the damage which we're doing to the global ocean is accelerating. We are dumping our plastics. We are dumping our phosphates. We are limiting the ability of the ocean to sustain this incredible uh, zone of life. We are urgently needing to look after our planet for the animals and for ourselves, as we are just part of one system.